New at 530, you might remember the Beach Boys, the Monkees, Sonny and Cher, just to name a few. Those were some of the big music stars in the 1960s. Who could forget? But little does anyone know, most of the music on their records wasn't played by them. It was created by a group of little-known studio musicians, one of whom is about to call Kern County home. 17's Rochelle Mercia sat down with Carol Kay, who reveals the studio secrets behind those great songs. Rochelle? Well, Jim, if you haven't heard of Carol Kay, you're likely in the majority. She was a studio guitarist and bassist. While fans were screaming for their favorite bands, record producers kept Kay and the other studio magicians hidden, magicians rather, cranking out the hit with none of the fame. I wish they Every song has its creators. Now for the real story. <laughs> this is Carol Kay. At 78, she might not look the part. One of these days, these boots are gonna walk all over you. But she played a part in hit and then he kept me after hit. If you'd have heard those songs and the singers when we did, uh, be, before we created our lines, you'd have never think that 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 most of those would be hits. Carol, play right from the very beginning, okay? Here we go, from the top. Like a song, let's start from the beginning, the 1950s. Kay started playing gigs when she was 14, and jazz was hot. There were bands playing everywhere, in the parks, in the strip, these uh, bowling alleys, you had jazz, you know, everywhere. I played in a high-class strip tease place called, I mean, called the Gilded Cage. I'm, I'm playing the music and, and everything, I'm looking, and I'm looking at the naked gals, and they're throwing their things around, I'm going to, uh, I, I never saw a naked lady in my life, and here I am playing in the strip tease place, and I can hardly play the music, you know. <laughs> In 1957, rock and roll started taking over, and that's the same year well-known music producer Bumps Blackwell discovered Kay playing in a club. He asked me to do a record date. I said, okay. But I knew when I did a record date that if I started studio work, because I saw it happen, we all saw it happen, you would lose your place in jazz. Here we go, we'll take 25. You yeah. had that factor that if you want to make money for your family, you better do studio work. So that, that's what I did. Kay joined other studio musicians, recording albums. Among the first songs, Summertime. Summertime with Sam Cooke. Pretty soon people started to call me for other things, and then it was the Richie Valens. You know. The faces on the album were the stars, met with screaming fans and personal praise, keeping the spotlight on themselves. Nowhere on the record was credit given to Kay and the other studio artists. The records would not have sold, you know. And we, I mean, and we don't don't have uh, long hair and all that kind of stuff, you know. I mean, we look like we just got off of a, off of a, a battleship or something. You know, record companies did it right; they, they kept us hit. After five years of playing guitar in the studio, the bass player didn't show up for a session, and Kay discovered the bass line. So w w when I got on bass, it was a lot more fun. You know, when I played on bass, then I could create what I heard should have been on the bottom, because you had people doing this. And the beat goes on. So about the third line that I came up with was, and the beat goes on. And the beat goes on. Not that we love the music. There's some tunes that were like, Ugh, you know. But you did your best to turn them into a hit records anyway. On a tour of one night stands, my suitcase and guitar in hand. You felt the hit take. The hair on my arm would stand would stand up. You know, like when we did the uh, uh, memories. Da 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 da. I went. So, so, so I started putting little lines in, and the drummer looked at me and smiled, and he started adding a little bit of lines. That was the take, that was the hit. Kay went on.
on to work with Phil Spector, Quincy Jones, and Brian Wilson, just to name a few. Can you do that, Kara, successfully? Here we go. Good vibration. a woman played on the Beach Boys album. The note doesn't say it's male or female. The note is either good or bad, see? So, you know, you don't think that way. Kay and the studio musicians could crank out 10 tunes in six hours, tweaking bare bone sheet music, creating the songs the kids dance to that sold records and lives on today. Today, uh, people are fighting for credits. They're fighting for me, me, me. We didn't think me, me, me. We thought us, 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 see, as, as a group, trying to create a product. We had to go home and look our, at ourselves in the mirror. Music is a business, and if more musicians thought that way, we would have a damn good business. Kay produced over 10,000 tracks, including many popular TV themes like MASH, y 5 and even Mission Impossible. Today, she teaches guitar and bass lessons on the internet using Skype. If you're interested in lessons or to learn more about Carol, you can go to our website, kget.com. Look for this story, and we've provided a link to her official homepage. Kay currently lives in Ventura County, but her plan is to move to Kern County soon. And what a gem that would be to have here in Kern County. Wow. Story. I thought it was amazing to interview her about all that. We sat there for probably two and a half hours, and we could have probably sat there for another yep. five or six and still not been bored. Yeah. Does she yeah. have any favorite musicians yeah. that she played with? She does. She likes Brian Wilson, said that he was actually a really good yeah. songwriter. The Monkees, Quincy Jones, only used her throughout a lot of his films. Mm. Uh, Phil Spector said that he really loved her kids. She could bring her kids into this studio while they were recording, as well as Mel Torme, who loved that she was a woman, in fact, say, hey, this is a woman playing on my tracks, and as well as Ray Charles. And, wow. and, and one of the amazing things is that she played bass with a pick. She played bass with Very a pick. She, said, she yeah. said that that wasn't so rare, but she uses these special hard picks, and they have Carol Kay written on them, yeah. Yeah. and her strings on her bass would be up just a little bit Elevated more lifted, little yeah, bit. Hmm. so she could get that real deep tone, is what she said. Wow. Yeah, That's really cool awesome. to, to hear her playing it today, and then to go back and... Yeah. Yeah, here Match how it was it back up. then. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Who knew? I know. Wow. Very I know. cool. Yeah, you revealed right. it for us. Great story. Yeah, thanks, thanks a lot. Michelle.